Wiggins, my boy, I need to use your gyroscope for a short while. That can be arranged, Mr. Holmes, if the price is right. You're sharp, Wiggins. I've always said so. But I would merely like to borrow it. Rent it, you mean? For money? All right. You will be compensated, let's say, a shilling. It's most precious to me, sir. Dr. Watson himself gave it to me last Christmas. Very well. I know when I'm bested. I'll buy it from you for half a crown. So, I hope you enjoy it as much as i done, sir. Carefree days of childhood are never appreciated at the time and always missed afterwards, wouldn't you say? If every child could grow up in such comfort and security as this, Holmes, what a different world this would be. Do you see any detail that might make this spot especially attractive to Miss Carroll? It's a charming picnic site, peaceful, lovely to look at, and bathed by the sound of children's laughter. I can see no other significance to this scene. How shall we win the boy's confidence, Watson? I must speak to him. I'll not speculate about the nature of his connection to this case, but I'm certain he is important. Well, perhaps we should speak with Miss Caraway's gentleman friend, the snooker player. there, boy. Might I have a word with you? I'm under instructions not to speak to strangers, sir. But I do have good manners. Good day, gentlemen. What is your name, lad? My name is Paul, sir. Nice gyro. Hello, Paul. I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. What is your family name? My father has warned me never to reveal it to strangers. He's very important in the city and has quite a temper. Might I see the gyro? Paul, how well did you know Anna Carraway? Very well indeed. Are you chums of hers? She was my nanny when I was little. Could I look at the gyro? Do you know where Anna is now? Maybe. I think I have to go now. 
Is that an English term or is it foreign? Do you like gyroscopes then? Very much. I have one of my own at home. My father won't allow me to bring it to school. Do you know how it works? It's all about inertia and centrifugal force and uh, uh, whatnot. It's the motion, you see. Uh, that's what makes them beautiful. Quite so, Doctor. Now, Paul, would you like this gyroscope? To keep? Yes, please. And you, in return, might help us find Miss Anna. Is it a bribe, then? Oh, not at all, my boy. Uh, we just need to find Miss Cadaway, and you're the only person who might be able to help us. You're certain that you are her friends? We're working with Scotland Yard on a criminal investigation. We are trying to keep her from harm, but we haven't been able to find her. In that case, I'll help all I can. I wouldn't want Anna to come to harm. She has a new house in East London somewhere. Someday she's going to take me there. She sings in the opera, whatever that is. Her sister Sarah is a stage actress. I think Anna has a boyfriend. Looks like a foreigner. He wears nice clothes. That's all. I hope we find Anna. I have to go now. Look here, Watson. This hat is worn inside and out. The hatter's label is barely discernible. With the few letters that are still legible, I'll wager that it reads, Eddington Equestrian. Oh, very likely, Holmes. Eddington is a high-toned shop for the fox hunting and riding crowd and other people with more money than sense. It's down by the embankment, oh, not too far from Rotten Row. Gentlemen, you may review the premises at your leisure, but do not touch anything. Direct any questions or concerns to me. Does this gentleman seem to you to have taken on the haughty characteristics of the clientele he serves? Indeed, uh, though perhaps he is disagreeable by nature rather than by training.
I found this cap, which I believe was purchased in your establishment. Perhaps you can tell me to whom you sold it so I could return it. I recognize the cap, though I can't approve of its condition. I would like to return the cap to the owner. May I have the name of the purchaser, please? No, you may not. My clients expect me to protect their privacy. They do not expect me to direct confidence tricksters or bounders to their homes, trying to collect rewards or favors to which they are not entitled. For all I know, you may have stolen that cat. You go too far, sir. You were insulting Sherlock Holmes, consultant to Scotland Yard. That is of no significance to me. I have my reputation to think of. Are the majority of your customers hunters or polo players? I'm sure I don't know how the answer to that question could possibly concern you. My customers are most refined people in London. Can you think of a way to overcome this gentleman's reluctance to assist us, Watson? Given his manner, there is very little that I would scruple at. To show the threatening grievous bodily harm, I can't imagine what would pry the information from him. All he seems to care about is the comfort of his customers and enhancing his own reputation. Brilliant, Watson. That's what we'll do. Disturb his customers and jeopardize his reputation. Let us make nuisances of ourselves. I've noticed one or two items with which we might discompose these tranquil surroundings. Perhaps we can use them to loosen this chap's tongue without having to tear it out. Uh, surely you jest, Holmes. Uh, still, I'll uh, follow your lead. Well, what have we here? It would seem that all of these so-called heraldic coats of arms are fraudulent. Now, wouldn't the local papers just love to know the true nature of the merchandise in these aristocratic neighborhoods? I suspect those customers won't be back. Now that they're gone, I feel an almost uncontrollable urge to test every polo mallet in the shop. Watson, bring down those mallets, will you? Now, sir, do you feel you could let the name of the cap's purchaser pass your lips? Or shall the doctor and I play a few chuckles? This is extortion. But I will tell you, Lord Brunwell bought that cap for his son, Paul. Now, please leave. Thank you, my man. Have a nice day. Doctor, let us not overstay our welcome.